Michael Carrick has some serious work to do if he's to make sure that Middlesbrough's season doesn't fizzle out prematurely. Um, results in the last couple of weeks have meant that Middlesbrough have fallen away from the playoff places, with where the side is currently sitting in 13th spot in the championship and seven points off the top six. Now, with the top four spaces pretty much wrapped up with Leeds, Leicester, Southampton and Ipswich having them secured. West Brom sitting not too far behind them. It means that really there's probably about seven or eight teams vying for one spot in the top six, which is unlike previous years. And it does mean that the standard will need to be higher if Middlesbrough are going to be pushing for that playoff spot come the end of the season. Now, with seven points separating Middlesbrough from the top six, it does mean that uh, victories are going to be needed sooner rather than later. Um, Middlesbrough have really struggled of late, putting the ball in the back of the net, but also keeping the ball out of their own net. And that's something that Michael Carrick alluded to after the defeat to Preston North End midweek. He said, we feel like we should have won the game, but we're not winning games. So something has got to change and we've got to do something about it. We're having a bit of a struggle at the moment to try and get results. You've got to stop the ball going in one net and score at the other end and we need to get that balance better than what we've got at the moment. So with Michael Carrick talking about the prospect of changing things up, making some tweaks to his side, I've decided to take a little bit of a look at some of the ideas of what uh, what fans could want him to do um, in order to uh, to show things up in his side, start to get some wins on the board and hopefully move Middlesbrough towards the top six spots. Um, if you are enjoying what I'm doing in these videos, then please do like and comment with any suggestions that you do have. Uh, please do also hit subscribe as it's crucial for, uh, for support on the channel. But here are my ideas for what Michael Carrick needs to be doing in the next couple of weeks to get Middlesbrough season have gone track. So middles, we need to start scoring goals if they're going to start winning matches. So what do we do? We need to get some strikers on the pitch. Um, obviously, middles for striking selections have been uh, pretty hard to come by in the last uh, last couple of weeks. Uh, Josh Coburn has been struggling with a groin injury. Uh, Emmanuel Latilath has been ruled out with injury as well. And that has meant that middles have kind of struggled to, uh, to name a natural striker in their starting 11, uh, meaning that, that kind of natural potency has kind of been missing from the, uh, from the, from the team. Um, in the last few weeks, uh, Sam Greenwood has been playing as a as a lone striker. Um, he's been playing there with Marcus Force uh, on the right flank, uh, coming in from that uh, that right hand position, uh, with maybe Finn Azaz playing on the on the left side most often. Now, while that works in terms of creativity and in terms of putting the uh, the opposition defence under pressure, um, it hasn't really worked in terms of just having that cutting edge inside the box. Middlesbrough have been creating plenty of chances. Um, they, they have been dominating the last few games, to be co quite frank with you. Um, they have been dominating in terms of possession and chances created, but they just really haven't had that person to put the ball in the, the net. And so that, for me, is one of the key issues that needs to be solved. Um, fans uh, all over social media, everyone is saying Marcus Force needs to be playing in, a, in attack. And for me, that is probably one of the, the main changes that Michael Carrick needs to be making. Um, Force was a, a number nine um, at Brentford before he, uh, before he came to Middlesbrough. Um, during Brentford's uh, promotion-winning campaigns, he was um, he was sort of the understudy to um, to Ivan Tony in, uh, in Brentford's attack, um, playing as that number nine off the shoulder of the defence. Um, everyone knows that uh, finishing is probably one of Marcus Force's uh, traits, I guess. Um, he is a natural finisher, probably the, the most natural finisher in Middlesbrough's squad. And so, for me, it just seems absolutely criminal at the moment that he isn't playing in that centre-forward position. Um don't get me wrong, it's, a, it's not a criticism of Michael Carrick because you can see what uh, what Marcus Force is doing when he is playing off that right-hand uh, right hand side. Um, I think in a normal situation, when, if Middlesbrough did have a, a powerful centre-forward, someone like Josh Coburn leading the line, then the ideal opportunity would be that the ball would be played up to Josh Coburn, Marcus Force would be kind of playing on the shoulder of the defender, and then he finds himself in those little pockets of space towards the right-hand side of the penalty area where he can get a shot away and ultimately score a goal, which is what he's, uh, what he's paid to do. Um, but I think given the lack of options that is available for Middlesbrough at the moment, um, it just feels silly that he isn't playing in that centre forward spot. Um, Sam Greenwood is um, he's a, he's a work in progress really as a as a player. He is he is still a young lad, which I think a lot of people do kind of forget. I think since he came from Leeds, people kind of expected the sort of finished article from him. It's also worth remembering that he's not a striker. He has been playing in the centre forward role, and he does work hard. He chases down balls, but he does lack the physicality to play in that role. His his natural position is probably more as a, a bit more of a number ten. Maybe someone coming in off the other left hand side to to play that sort of role. So it could be an option for Marcus Force to um a simple swap really for Michael Carrick for Marcus Force to play in the centre forward position. Maybe move Sam Greenwood out to the right. Um obviously Middlesbrough are currently without Izzy Jones, who would have that on the right uh, winger spot 
are nailed down at the moment. He's, he's not available. And so perhaps even just the, the smallest tweak in terms of swapping Greenwood and Force around, uh, putting Greenwood out on the right, uh, putting Force up top, and just having that real natural number nine in the penalty area could make all the difference for Middlesbrough. Uh, just having someone there to finish off these chances because being blunt, Middlesbrough are doing the hard part. They are creating these opportunities. They are getting the ball into the box. They just need someone to put the ball in the back of the net. For me, Marcus Force could be the option to do that. So playing Marcus Force as a striker would really solve the problem of having someone in the box, someone to put the ball in the back of the net. What does that do in terms of the uh, the overall build-up of the team? Now, Marcus Force perhaps isn't the uh, it perhaps doesn't have the physicality to play as a lone striker. Maybe it does impact what Michael Carrick wants to do in terms of the build-up of the play. So, would a change of formation perhaps um, suit the team better? Could Marcus Force potentially play as a uh, a second striker? top for Middlesbrough. Um, if Middlesbrough were to uh, to prosper in that regard, uh, perhaps Marcus Force could play up top with Sam Greenwood, have a two-pronged attack of two strikers uh, playing in a centre-forward position, and that would therefore free up people to, uh, to slot into their more natural roles behind them. Um, I think with Izzy Jones uh, missing through injury, it does mean that Middlesbrough are lacking um, the natural width in their squad at the moment. Um, and I think when you are in this kind of situation, when you are lacking uh, these kind of players, I think it's important to, um, to, to put round round pegs and round holes, I guess, uh, make sure that people are playing in their natural positions. If you don't have natural wingers available, don't line up in a formation that requires natural wingers. Perhaps this is a call for uh, Middlesbrough to play a slightly different formation. And uh, I've, I've thought even maybe going into a 4-4-2 diamond sort of sort of kind of system. Um, if Greenwood was playing up top with Marcus Force, perhaps it would mean that Finn Azaz could play in a sort of number 10 role just behind them. It would then mean that you'd have three cent uh, central midfield uh, positions behind them, uh, where you could perhaps put uh, Johnny Housen as a deep-lying player. You could have Hayden Hackney on one side, Lewis O'Brien on the left. That You've then got the flexibility to have uh, Riley McGree or Dan Barlassa coming in there as well. And it means that you're then not having players having to play out wide on the wing in positions that they're not truly comfortable with. And you can instead try to keep things a little bit more narrow, uh, keep players playing in their natural position and ultimately have two players playing up front so that when the ball does get into those areas, they will be there to put the ball in the back of the net. Force will be a natural finisher. He'd be great to have in the box to put the ball in the back of the net. And um, Sam Greenwood has some real qualities. He does chase down defenders. He can drop into those little pockets of space. And um, he's got a vicious shot from long range as well. So that could be really handy as well. And so perhaps playing with 4-4-2 diamond formation could be a, uh, another way of getting the, uh, the best out of the players who are currently available. Um, it would obviously require um, the fullbacks within the team to uh, to step up. It would mean them playing a slightly more advanced sort of role. Uh, but I think at the same time, Lucas Angel is a player who can play further forward. He is someone who likes to get forward. Uh, Luke Ayling, the same on the other side. He does like to get forward. Um, he has been exposed a couple of times when he has got himself too far forward. And then the pace of an attacker, such as Jack Clark against Sunderland a couple of weeks back, um, did leave him a little bit exposed. But it is an option for Middlesbrough to, uh, to just kind of tweak that formation uh, get players playing in their uh, their correct positions, and uh, that could be one way of uh, getting Middlesbrough firing in the next couple of weeks. Another potential tactical change that Michael Carrick could make would be to uh, alter things around and go back to three central defenders in the system. Um, while Middlesbrough have been playing with four at the back more recently, they do regularly used to play with that sort of hybrid system of three at the back or five at the back, depending on whether they were in or out of possession. Um, most recently, uh, Luke ayling has been playing right back, uh, Dale Fry and Raph Vandenberg have perhaps been the other preferred options at centre-back, with uh, Lucas Engel playing on the left. But with so many defensive options available, it could mean that a slight change in formation could free things up for Michael Carrick. It could mean that they're a little bit more defensively solid. It could free those wings to get further up and add that crucial whip to Middlesbrough's attack. Um, Middlesbrough really do have the players to, uh, to be able to do this now. Uh, with competition for places, they've obviously got Lucas Engel and Luke Thomas. Um, on the left, they've got Luke Ayling at right back. They've got Dyke Steele, who is uh, back in and around there. We've got a wealth of central defenders who are available. Um, I've mentioned about Fry and Vandenberg, but Paddy McNair's there and available. You've also got Matt Clark, who is available as well and can play on the left side of defence. And snaps that balance would be really quite key in terms of Middlesbrough moving forward. It would provide that solid foundation for Middlesbrough to build on, um, allow those wide players to get a little bit further forward, and they would then mean that Lucas Engel could bomb forward down the left and Luke Ayling could go forward down the right while still having that defensive cover because that has been something where um, it has been an area where Middlesbrough have struggled, quite frankly. They have pushed forward and they do dominate possession in games, uh, but then they are quite quickly caught on the counter and with uh, the forward struggling to get back in time, it has left Middlesbrough's defenders a little bit exposed. So, 
if uh, Michael Carrick can do that, we can play with three central defenders with, say, Matt Clark on the left side, Dale Fry central and Ralph Vandenberg on the right. That would have real quality and real defensive stability at the back and mean that those wide players were able to push forward, add width to the attack and provide a, a and ultimately a, a suitable foundation to, a, to sort of build on. Um, I think it's also worth mentioning that um, there's, there is flexibility in there. I think Luke Thomas is someone who could play on that left side of uh, central defence as well. Uh, Luke Ayling on the other side, he can also play in central defence as well. So there is, there is options there. There are um, possibilities for Michael Character to change things around and put players in those right positions. And perhaps that is the way to uh, to go moving forward. Um, ultimately, Middlesbrough aren't going to win games if they're, uh, they're not able to keep clean sheets. That's something that Middlesbrough have really struggled to do over the last couple of months. And so if Middlesbrough can shut up shop a little bit at the back, a little bit more structure to their uh, to their play moving forward. It could mean that Middlesbrough are more difficult to beat. And then as a result, it would mean that those defeats start to turn into draws and some of those draws start to turn into, into victories. And that would therefore mean that Middlesbrough start to close the gap on those top six positions by reverting to a formation that we have played recently, uh, have played historically, and a formation that we have had relative success in over the over recent months and recent years. Never like calling out individual players to be dropped from the team because I do I do believe that uh, every player has has their value. I don't think any player within Middlesbrough squad is a bad player or someone who's not capable of uh, playing for Middlesbrough and shining for us. But I do think that perhaps a change in goal could be the uh, the way to go moving forward. Um, Seni Dieng was Middlesbrough's first choice goalkeeper for the first half of the season. Uh, while the results weren't particularly outstanding during that time, Sene Dieng was one of the few players who was emerging with plenty of credit for his performances. He was he was a player who was a sort of natural successor for Zach Stefan in terms of his ball playing ability, his comfort on the ball and his ability to start Middlesbrough's uh, attacking moves from the back. Crucially, he was able to, uh, to keep the ball out of his own net as well. He was someone who was excellent at shot stopping, someone with excellent reflexes and someone who was a real asset for us in those first few months. Now, he did suffer an injury. Um, towards uh, towards the back end of December, uh, which kept him out for a couple of games, and then obviously he was called up for the uh, the African Cup of Nations as well. Um, and as a result of that, Tom Glover has been um, been the, the number one goalkeeper, I guess, for um, for probably about two months now. Um, he's done a decent job. Don't get me wrong. Um, I think as far as backup goalkeepers go, I think he probably is one of the uh, the best in the championship, and he has stepped up brilliantly. But I think what we have seen in the last few weeks, or what I personally have seen, is a goalkeeper who just, in my opinion, probably just isn't quite as comfortable as Seni Dieng. He's he's strong on the ball, but for me, his shot stopping isn't quite there. There's been a few times where he's been caught out, um, caught out of position. Um, I've, I've noticed a few times in the last few weeks about him being caught at his near post. It happened against Sunderland. And it happened against Bristol City, and then it happened again the other night against Preston North End as well. And I think while I don't think it's fair to blame Glover for our recent results, because I think that the team have been absolutely woeful. And I'm looking back to that game against Bristol City. I'm certainly not blaming him for any of the goals because our midfield was an absolute shambles that day. Um, even the games around that, uh, we just haven't been good enough outfield. And in terms of defending, uh, defending as a unit, uh, we just haven't done it well enough whatsoever. But ultimately, if you do have a good goalkeeper in goal, they are able to um, to maybe get you out of jail a little bit with some saves to uh, to keep your team in the game when when things aren't going well outfield. And I think for Seni Dieng, he is now back from the African Cup of Nations. Um, he's been on the bench for the last couple of matches. And for me, it's probably time to bring him back into the team. Um, he is our best goalkeeper uh, by an absolute mile, in my opinion. And so for me, I think it would be absolutely essential to, uh, to make that change, bring Dieng back into the team team provide that um, stability that's in there because I think the key to uh, a functional team and a functional defense is consistency at the back there I think if Middlesbrough do have a, a strong spine with the Yang center um, Dieng in goal, sorry. Uh, Dale Fry, centre-back. Ralph Vandenberg, centre-back. You've got Johnny House and Dan Barlasser in central midfield. That's quite a strong spine that you've got there. And I think if those players are kind of playing together on a on a regular basis, on a weekly basis, um, that sort of a co coherence between those players is, is there for all to see. And I think... I think ultimately that will be a move that would see Middlesbrough look a little bit more organised at the back. It would also, I think it would also instill a lot more confidence in Middlesbrough's defenders as well, because in the last few weeks, Middlesbrough haven't conceded that many chances. We're not a side who get ripped apart time after time. Um, if the teams aren't recording 10, 15, 20 shots against us in these matches, it might be a little bit different against Leicester City this weekend. But on the whole, 
Middlesbrough don't concede a vast amount of chances, but what does happen is they do seem to be scoring from almost every single one of these opportunities. So for me, Senny Dieng is our best goalkeeper. He should come into the team, and that would be a minor tweak that could potentially save us a few goals between now and the end of the season. Next tweak that I'd like to see Michael Carrick make would be the return of Matthew Hoppy. Now, Middlesbrough's attacking woes have been well publicised. The fact that we don't have many fit strikers available. Uh, Josh Coburn's out injured. Emmanuel Letty Lath's out injured. Marcus Four seems to be playing out on the right with Sam Greenwood playing an attack. It does mean that those options are fairly limited in terms of having a centre forward. So it seems really, really daft to me to have a natural centre forward, someone who has been deemed quality for Middlesbrough, someone who's been brought in as a player who could be a star for the future, um, just sitting in the reserves, not really doing anything. Now, Matthew Hoppy, it did look like his days at Middlesbrough were numbered. Um, he obviously went on unknown to the MLS um, and he has returned since then. He's now back at Middlesbrough in training with the squad um, in the last couple of weeks. Um, I think it was against Preston. He did appear on the substitutes bench as well. Um, clearly shows that he's now starting to emerge in Michael Carrick's thinking. But even in that game when Middlesbrough were chasing the game, the decision wasn't there for Matthew Hoppy to, to come on the pitch and um, give him the chance to, to try and impact the game. And it just seems really, really silly for a side that are lacking a natural number nine, a side that are chasing goals when they are chasing games, like against Bristol City or against um, Preston, to have an attacking talent like that on the bench or in the reserves and simply not being used. Um, we've mentioned before about how uh, Michael Carrick is playing players out of position at the moment. Sam Green has been playing up front and Marcus Force on the right. Why not give Matthew Hoppy a chance and play him in centre forward? Um, I'm not saying he's going to be starting games. I'm not even saying that he's going to necessarily make much of an impact. Um, personally, I haven't seen a huge amount of him since he joined Middlesbrough, so it's really hard for me to kind of say exactly what he will be bringing to the team. But it just seems really silly to have a player like him and around the squad, but not being utilised on a day-to-day -day basis when our attacking shortcomings are clear for all to see. Um, does he have a long-term future at Middlesbrough? As it stands at the moment, you would have to say no. Um, he is a player that does seem to be way down the pecking order. I think when everyone's fit, he's probably fourth or fifth choice in terms of being a centre-forward. In the situation that Middlesbrough are in at the moment, with no Coburn, no Lassie Laff, with Marcus Force being preferred out, out out on the right. If that is a position where Michael Carrick does want to keep playing him, then he needs to look at those options at centre forward and see what is the best way to uh, to get a striker into our system who can hold up the ball, who can lead the line and ultimately be a, a good team player for the squad. Um, I think what we've seen this season is that our strikers, they don't need to be scoring 30 goals. I think Tuba Rappom last season was a... Um, a bit of an anomaly, really. It's been a long, long time since Middlesbrough have a striker who scored that many goals. And I think one of the, the few silver linings to Middlesbrough season this term has been the fact that goals have been spread quite evenly around the team. So no one would be expecting Matthew Hoppy to come into the team and hang in 10 or 15 goals between now and the end of the season. But as a natural number nine, someone who can come in and lead the line, he could be someone who could make a real difference. And if he was to be brought on in some of these games where Middlesbrough are chasing the matches, come on for the last 10 or 15 minutes, he could cause, he could cause some real problems for uh, for defenders um, that we're coming up against. So for me, it seems utterly foolish to have Matthew Hoppy in and around the squad, but not to use him. I personally would like to see more of him and whether that's off the bench or in the starting lineup, it would be great to see more of him to see what he has to offer. Um, ultimately, if you look back at Tuba Bomb, it looked like his days at Middlesbrough were, like his career was dead and buried as well. He looked like a player who was uh, destined to be able to be sold on. And ultimately, he got his opportunity as a result of injuries and the fact that Middlesbrough didn't have anyone else to play in those pre-season matches. And for Matthew Hoppy, it could be exactly the same. He's in a situation where he's got very little to lose. His stock at Middlesbrough is pretty low already. So give him an opportunity. Put him on the bench. Bring him on with the last 10 minutes to go. Um, see how he gets on, because ultimately Middlesbrough could have a solution to their striking problems in their midst. We just have to give him a chance, see what he can do, and then ultimately see whether he's able to uh, to contribute anything to the team in terms of his attacking output. So that's what I think in terms of potential options for Michael Carrick to consider in order for Middlesbrough to improve their results. But what do you think? Please do drop into the comments below. Let me know what you would like Michael Carrick to do in the coming weeks to try and get Middlesbrough season back on track. And be sure to hit like and hit subscribe uh, below as well, uh, because there's plenty more Middlesbrough content coming in the, uh, the coming weeks and months. Thanks for tuning in.